Consistency is the key to success. Changing the world through health and wellness. Small change is great change. Exercise is hard work. Hi, and thank you so much for joining us at Fit Over 50. Myself and my partner, Doug Jeffries, so we're at it again. How you doing there, Doug? Good morning, Tony. Happy Sunday. How are you, buddy? Oh, this is fantastic. We are now on our very first segment coming to you live and uncut and raw about how to stay healthy even when you're over 50. So as my partner would say, how would you say a partner? Fit over what? My New Jersey roots fit over fit it. Ah, that's and, what I'm talking and th about. This is my this is my punctilious partner of salubrious activities, Mr. Tony Hill. And for you out there watching, and I'm sure you all know this, Tony has dedicated his life to helping and um, edifying people on just th their health and tone. I mean, your health is the most important thing. It really, it really is, man. Because you know, this morning. We, the reason we decided to come to you guys early Sunday morning is because, you know, we wanted you to get information to start your week off really good, you know, because most of us think that when we're older, we actually get, we, we welcome illness. Well, you don't have to do that. Uh, Doug and I, we're going to share with you uh, a lot of different topics. We got so many guests coming. Uh, we're all over the world. We're live international as well. And we want to thank you for your support and our sponsors, you know, Touche Fitness. And of course, my friend Doug. 41 Sets. So you can check out 41sets.com. We are a production design studio all for Hollywood uh, set building. So do everything from TV, film, commercial, a little bit of everything. So thank you, 41 Sets. Yeah, so you know being this cause. Exactly. So you know that we, Jeff and I, we have a, a innate conviction to really, really give you the truth about being healthy. We both are over 60 years of age. And so we live that lifestyle. Wow. We breathe that lifestyle. And so we've taken it upon ourselves to invest in you. So please, you guys invest in us. Uh, yes. And as I say, uh, you got to respect the temple that was given to you. I mm -hmm. mean, all the money in the world doesn't matter if you lose your health and everything starts from within. And if you're healthy, happy, you have so much more to offer to your your loved ones, your friends, family. So why not start with you? And it's right. creating that routine. Right. Tom? And you, yeah, you know, I uh, this morning uh, I was told uh, if you. Whatever you eat in secret shows up in public. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, man. It's, it's so true. You cannot oh, hide. No, no, you can't hide. So, hey, you know what? I, I got a question. Uh, uh, the question was sent to me uh, about, uh, we're going to jump right into it, you guys. Uh, anybody know about ketamine, ketamine treatments, ketamine treatments, ketamine? Did I say it right? Ket ketamine? Ketamine, yes. Ketamine. Oh, See, that's that. Now from Indiana, ketamine, 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 right? Ketamine treatments. What are they, Doug? Specifically, well, what, why, do people, it, why do people it, use them? Oh yeah, well let me explain. Uh, ketamine was created, uh, I believe, back in the uh, '60s. It was an anesthesia that was used during right. the, the Vietnam War. Mm. And uh, flash forward, uh, they found that the the residual effect has a really uh, a, a state of well being and an, and an uplift. Right. An interesting to uh, topic. Uh, 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 Profofol was used in uh, oh. an anesthesiologist. And that was that was killed Michael Jackson, right? Exactly. And oh. uh, Profofol, you know, basically the, the, with the uh, anesthetic, it's something that doesn't drop your heart rate. So basically they switch from prof Profofol to ketamine mm. and there's a whole new surgeons or a surgeons of uh, anesthesiologists that started to notice the, 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 the benefits. And it is really becoming an amazing mainstream treatment for depression. Really? And based on, yeah, after, you know, after the, uh, the, the pandemic, I mean, there's a lot of people that are struggling. Right. And, uh, unlike uh, SSRIs and SNRIs, mm -hmm. I mean, it, 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 it works almost instantly. It, right, it, right, right, right. Amazing wow. treatment for depression. So, if you're out there struggling, I would uh, highly recommend giving <laughs> it a whirl. 
it really wow. is an amazing, amazing cutting edge treatment for dealing with depression. So, you know, uh, when when I actually think about depression, right? I there are so many ways. Um, you know, I I think I don't know. Being from a different background, um, when we we didn't know what depression was, right? <laughs> We thought depression was getting a spanking from mom, you know, when we done something wrong, right? Yeah. Because you know, you got that feeling all day. And and then we got that depression when mom says, wait till your father get home, right? And that's like, oh my God, he don't get home to nighttime and we gotta go through the whole day. So we these things as I was brought up, we didn't understand them. But the thing that I that I, I have been I look I was looking up um about gender roles and depression. Um and how that works. And it said here in the study, it said women are nearly twice as likely as men to be diagnosed with depression. Hmm. And I and I and I thought about that because the, the interesting thing is is that um and if anyone wants to jump in, jump right in. Yeah, I please think women, I think women have a uh if if that study correctly, um the children, the house cleaning, the the cooking uh and some women even work and then if you think about all of those responsibilities then but they have an intimate side to them too but then when you look at all of that right and then you take a man what we got one job right yeah <laughs> we just go to work and that's it and so i can really as when i looked at that i said man do you know that makes a lot of sense and why women Women are actually, uh, but they they kind of have a built-in mechanism to kind of deal with the depression, but they hide it very well until, you know. Yeah, there's. I, I believe women are stronger than us, and um, yeah. it's really fascinating. The brain is made up of chemical, magnetic, and uh, uh, electric, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, and and it, there there there's photographs of a healthy brain that looks like a Christmas tree and an unhealthy brain that looks like post-apocalyptic times. Wow. Right? So, um, you know, uh, uh, past traumas can really affect it, and and if everything, you know, it's like you can't see. You go to the eye doctor <clears> to <throat> prescribe the prescription, but <throat> mental health has really been kind of shoved under the rug for the longest while. And I think it's really coming uh, to the forefront right now. I mean, look, let's what's going on in our society. I mean, it's it's kind of crazy. So, right. I mean, we really need to really address <laughs> this on a much, much more larger scale. Yeah, because, you know, this morning I thought about, I said, you know, what are we going to talk about today? And it's really a huge thing today. And I think what happens is it's the roles. It's your personal life. It's your family life. It's, it's your relationship with your parents where it all starts. I think that's the origin of where everything starts. Yeah. Because if you don't have an outlet, if you don't have an outlet, then you actually, you, you don't have a release. I mean, you don't, you, you build up on that. Say, for example, you didn't like your father, right? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Maybe something he said or something he did or whatever. And as a man, you you grow up and now you meet other men who may yeah. not like their father, right? <laughs> yeah, it's generational. And I'll I'll share a little story with myself. When I was growing up, I had a I had a brother who was a year older than me, and mm -hmm. I mean, literally tortured me. Wow. Terrorized me. Wow. And I think it was, you know, what they they the uh, PTSD. I think I had childhood, yeah, childhood yeah. PTSD, which uh, you know, the cortisone levels are, you know, flowing and your brain just kind of seizes up. I had a hard time learning in school because I was traumatized. Uh -huh. And you're absolutely right. I mean, in those in, in those early stages is really when you are developing, not only, you know, physically, mentally. And, you know, we're we all have uh, different stuff that we're dealing with and we all deal with things differently. And then so, they're crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, it really is. It's what what develops us in those, you know, those beginning years. And those years are supposed to be the ones that are comforting mm -hmm. and nurturing. Right. And depending on how you were raised. I mean, you know, and the slightest thing can throw off that balance. And it really is our perspective, what we choose to see through our eyes. Correct. And with a healthy brain, you can flip the switch. But if something's not totally in balance in there, you really have a hard time figuring out 
why? Why do I see it this way? Wow. Yeah. You know, I, I'm, yeah actually, I'm actually reading. I'm, I'm, you know, I just, you know, before the show, I'm, I'm looking at, you know, the question that came across my mind was why is men's mental health oftentimes overlooked? Why is that? Why we, why, why is that? And you know what it says? It says that, and I'm reading from the quote, it said mm -hmm. men's mental health stigma is rooted in several factors such mm -hmm. as myths about mental health. Okay. What we think about it, social norms and self -per perception and cultural beliefs. Think about it. You know, yeah. as a guy growing up, you know, like you, you hear men don't cry. Okay. That's exactly it, Tom. Why we is that? We're, exactly. we're macho, we're machismo. We don't want to say that anything's wrong with us and we, you know, that we, we need help. Exactly. And, uh, and that's what it is. This is why there's approximately, what, 60 to 70% now higher men taking their own lives at the age of 35, between 30 and 40 years of age, and their family, they're committing suicide. I think because of that one thing right there, that men don't cry. And I think, um, men, if you're out there, hey, man, if you got to shed a tear, I'm going, like, I'm one boy, if I get sensitive, I cry in public. Yeah, I sure why, man. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's if you get me, right? and you know, and I'm not an actor like you. <laughs> But I'd be so serious, man. You know, and, and if I got in trouble, I try to cry, but that just doesn't work too well. That's fascinating, too. I mean, he's through that, you know. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was reading. They say that, um, uh, you know, within uh, trauma, like bad experiences um, are uh, last a lot longer in, in, in our memories than positive experiences. Wow. Yeah. And, and we, you know, with um with depression as i said i've been dealing with it for quite some time and basically uh -huh. there's a path in your brain right uh -huh. that it's worn down worn down worn down so anytime that uh, you know something you know uh, uh, unsettling or that something happens that you, you know you get stressed out mm -hmm. you, you just go down that path you know it and with the ketamine uh, it creates new neuro pathways. Right. So you're finding more connections, more new paths to go down. And these paths are, you know, they're they're much more um, healthy. Is that kind of like smoking weed? No, completely okay. different. <laughs> it, 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 it's psychedelic. Okay. okay. Uh, That's like yeah. back, in, back in the 60s and 70s, huh? Yeah, with LSD and yeah, exactly. you know, mushrooms and all that, but and and I recently tried the mushrooms too, which were because uh, they're being uh, also touted as uh, helping to deal with uh, you know your mental health because mm. we talk about physical health, but mental health is equally as important. So wow. there a, there are so many treatments out there. You know, I tried TMS, which is the magnetic pulse from one side of the brain to the other. It's a modern day electric shock, if you will. I tried stem cell, um, uh, you know, the, the, the ketamine, the SSRIs, the SNRIs, which personally, um, big pharma, mm -hmm. you know, you're, 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 you don't know what's going to work, how long it's going to take, right. you know, trying to get off of them, side effects. The beauty of ketamine is that it is instant. There's an instant gratification and with it after this treatment. So anybody out there that it is suffering uh, from some kind of um, a mental health issue, uh, I, I really want to champion you to go out there seeking you will find and give that a shot. Ketamine really is amazing. It really helped me with, you know, in my journey. So, yeah, that's 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 a good thought, because, you know, it, it was really heavy on my heart today to talk about it. And, oh, and maybe, you know, uh, uh, we just want everybody to know who's listening at the sound of our voice that this is a uh, very raw and very personal show. Uh, sometimes we'll have, we'll celebrate uh, certain things like, you know, uh, kids or certain uh, things that we're representing. Uh, like we may have a, a man week or whatever. We talk about things, a man or a woman in crisis or a man in crisis or children. And, you know, how do you behave them? Or then we talk about food and its relationship to how we think about ourselves. So that's what the show is about. So uh, again, we're talking on mental health today, which is very, very important. It's just, it just weighed on me this morning, Doug. You oh, know, uh, you know, because uh, 
without a strong mind, you can't have a strong body, you know, because right. it, it kind of kills, it defeats the purpose, you know? Yeah, you it, it really does. And, and once again, this platform is raw, as Tony said, it's all about, it's all about sharing and giving back. So if you're out there, we love to hear your, your, your comments and uh, just share your experiences with right. us. And that's, that's, that's really what it's about. And we'll and, put that on there. We'll put that on there in the front where you can uh, uh, send your comments, your experiences to us. And we, we will give you a shout out, you know, on our next show. Our yeah. shows, yeah. So, you know, what, Doug, I wanted to, something really interesting and based upon you, my friend, uh, they have a demographics of, of uh, people who are uh, affected uh, or most likely to be affected by uh, mental health. And the demographics is really interesting because uh, among the white race ethnicity, 22.6% mm -hmm. 22 uh, is usually affected. Uh, among the black African American, 17.3 and the Asian 13.9 wow. and, and two or more, we're talking 35.8%. That's outside those demographics. So, you know, mental health is real. Yeah. I mean, and like it, it affects us some aggressively, some passively, but it really affects how we look. Look at COVID. Look at what COVID did. I, yeah. I mean, COVID really, I, I, you know, and once again, you know, we're, we're all unique to our DNA. Right. So, you know, with COVID, I think it really brought that out. So, you know, some people got it and they they were fine. And other people had actually, God bless them, mm -hmm. uh, took their life. So right. with that said, we all deal with that different because we're all chemically, you, you know, different. So uh, mental health now, it was uh, what Ronald Reagan was the one that stopped the funding for all the, the, the mental hospitals and whatever. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I think with COVID, just that, um, you know, being by yourself, not being able to distract Yes. Really, that time alone. I mean, if you're not healthy, it really starts to to, 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 to play on you. So in a way, it's it's being it's being addressed more now than I think it's ever been before in the past, because, you know, way back when I was like, oh, mental health. Oh, no, can't do it. I know. I know. That's a bad thing. We call it, we call it in law enforcement. Fifty one fifty. If you were one. 5150 that was the code for crazy yeah 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 but there's there's so many treatments out there now um that can really change your life yeah so you have to be willing to take that first step and there's nothing wrong with seeking help i mean i look back at my own journey i i, I really didn't want to admit that you know there was anything wrong and ah, i can do this by myself and do this by myself but finally you know, you get to a point in your life where you're looking around and you should be happy, right? Yes. And yes outside exactly. looking in, wow. And then all of a sudden, I compare, you know, you my 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 analogy to being depressed is you know the world's in color, right? Yes, 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 yes. And you're exactly. draped in this gray, dark veil that whatever you do, you can't see, you know it's out there, but you can't see it. And for years. I thought by re removing this veil, mm -hmm. that's how to do it. But no, that's got to come from inside out. Mm -hmm. And once I decided to go inside and go, why? That that was the catalyst that made me start to go. No, nah, I, I guess exactly. I need help. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, you you're so right, brother. So you know what I'm going to do right now? What's that, Tom? I'm going to talk about a few things that helps in mental health, okay? We're talking about from a food perspective, right? Uh, exercise too, right? Huh? Exercise is a big Exercise one, right? is a big is a big thing, but it's actually, a, uh, but maybe probably five or 10% of, of the overall picture. The mm -hmm. food actually makes up the bigger part. Uh, there is like, you know, like broccoli, uh, uh, Brussels sprouts, mm -hmm. things like that. Those are really good uh, to help fight depression. Uh, turmeric is really good because everything in our brain is chemical. Yeah, berries, any kind of berries, strawberries, raspberries, blueberries. These these things are high in antioxidants and they really, really, really help reduce or help us deal with life itself. So these are really good foods to kind of help fight 
you know, depression. However, the issue is that when you start to do the right thing by your body, you have to be faithful to it. You can't just, Consistency you know, is the key to success in, in any aspect of your life, whether it's relationships, exactly. uh, career, especially your, your your health, your fitness. Oh, you better believe that, man. Because, you know, in food, there's also natural, natural antidepressants. Now, food has personality, right? Go ahead. Well, you are, yeah, I see this. No, I, 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 I literally, you said that I just read something uh, this morning. Hey, nutmeg. so we, hey. I, I know. Nutmeg. Oh. Nut, nutmeg is a um, uh, uh, psychotropic. Yep. Uh -huh. I, I never had any idea. This goes way, way back. Yeah, but look at the I first, what is the first part of the word? Nuts. Exactly. It makes you see things. It's not there. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> I like that. You know me, man. I'm a jokester. Yeah. That's what it's about. So let's let's talk about not only nutmeg. Let's talk about watercress. Let's talk about spinach. Let's talk about uh, lettuce. Let's talk about fresh herbs and peppers and pumpkin and lemon. Oh, let's talk about these are natural antidepressants. And you 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 basically are what you eat. And uh, you know, unfortunately, in America, most of the food is adulterated almost to the point of being harmful. Exactly. And that's why it's so important. Farm to table, organic. No GMOs, it. man. You 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 gotta really cut to the chase. I love it. Uh, yes. Because yes. It's, it's so important to eat yes. clean and pure. And you know yeah. what a what, what a lovely thing in America. They adulterate the food, then they charge you for your health insurance. I, isn't that crazy? That crazy, man. Oh, we get ready to get political now. Watch no, we it. won't get political. We'll ah, stay with the house. We'll say hey, hey, now way. there are also foods that boost your moods as well. Yes. Now, see, the thing is, is that I tell people, I says, okay, first, before you start any program, you got to get in your mind to detox. Detoxification is actually staying away from the foods that made you toxic. It's not the way people think about it. So in order for your body to receive these things, uh, you have to be faithful. To cleaning your act up right mm -hmm. so some of the foods that that i have used that really cheap it's it, they're mood swingers and you yeah. only to feel this if you really if you're healthy okay or you on the journey uh one of them is oats and then and oats are really good for your body um bananas are really good and fermented foods now i'm going to tell you what i tried here that's lately so true. my canis is japanese and it's so big in the fermented foods and that's the what is it the green the oh green you know what i you know what i love kimchi oh kimchi that's that's that, that's one of it is and that fermented food not only uh it's it's good for the gut biome it's just it it has those uh those lovely properties exactly and, yes and boy i tell you i eat that with tuna, it just makes a difference. There we and go, there, there we go. Kimchi right there. Oh, I uh, like, like that. Is that spicy? Kimchi. Is that spicy? Yeah, it's spicy kimchi. You got I just it, finished great. my jar. What's that? I just finished my jar of spicy kimchi. Yeah. Yes. How do you eat it? How do you eat it? I eat it raw, you right out, raw. right out of the drawer. Yeah. Fermented foods, man, are so <laughs> good. <laughs> they say, you know. Uh, if, if they say everything starts in the gut, right? Yeah. Basically, it's, I believe it's the intrinsic nerve, nervous system. It's the mini brain in in, in your gut. Mm -hmm. So there there's a big correlation, as you said, between mental health and gut health. Oh, it so really gut is. Gut health stems from what we are putting into our bodies. Exactly. It's so important. You are what you eat. And you know what's so in the last, but certainly not least. I know I like it, and I know ladies like it. Because it's really good for you. Dark chocolate. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What, what, what is it? Dark, dark chocolate helps uh, lower lower the cortisol levels. Exactly. In age, those cortisol levels are what yes. you know, the, the belly is. fat and that stubborn thing. And dark chocolate is just amazing. And you know what happens, though? The women, the women don't even realize why they crave. Most women crave chocolate. Not everybody craves chocolate. But when they're going on their cycles, the reason they want that chocolate so much is simply because their body's being depleted of iron. Chocolate is very high yeah. in iron. So it's a it, once the, the woman eats it, she feels satisfied because it's balancing out her iron while she's going through her menstrual cycle. Yes. And once again, foods do have that uh, medicinal 
purpose. Oh, I'm know, telling you. They, they, I mean, everything in this planet that we need, the holistic approach, obviously, is the way to go. And with that said, here's a, here's a little great recipe. You take uh, dates, you take a little almond butter, cut mm. them open, stick them in there, then you dip them in dark chocolate. Ah, man, and drip the honey on it. Wow, what is the greatest? Healthy. Yeah, thing. You ought to be shaming yourself. Ah, it's good. That that is good. That sounds good. I might want to. Yeah, and and that, that sounds like it's too much work though. Nah, but it's the payoff's worth it. <laughs> you, 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 you don't have to sacrifice taste for healthy and nutritious eating. You yeah. just gotta you, you gotta go out there and you know find it. It's a gastronomic pilgrimage. It's an Epicurean's delight of healthy foods and you know you have to look and you can be satisfied and your body will feel good it'll help the mind the energy all of those things especially especially as we age because when we're younger you can get away with eating whatever and your body's still fire yeah yeah you can do it but yeah. oh over 50 and you know over 50 but over 55 it, it's almost exponential exactly yeah it is uh because you know people people don't really understand the value in um i guess what we're talking about is is actually being able to maintain a quality life now we're all going to get old and i think somebody told me a, a while back ago two things you can guarantee that's guaranteed in this life taxes exactly. and death <laughs> yeah it's so true you can never, you can never avoid that. You know what I mean? And so, you know, it's like, you know, like one of the things that I used to tell females when they, when they're exercising or whatever, if they go in the program, the problem with women is their hormones. If a woman's hormones is off, usually as she gets older, because the testosterone, you don't have a lot of it anyway, but when, as you get older, if you're not active, the testosterone begins to lower just as it does in men. But your estrogen levels are through the roof because you're a woman. It makes up of your soft skin and a lot of other things. But there are foods that can help balance your, your hormones. Like uh, I told about cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli, uh, kale, things like that. But some of these you want to have before uh, three o'clock because usually late in the afternoon, these foods are incredibly gassy, especially in some women, not all. And they'll make her bloated, and of course, you know, not good to be around. You know what I mean? Yes, right. So I, I, you know, uh, we. I guess the, the the real nice word is flatulence. Yes, flatulence. <laughs> we, you know, we're talking about the pull your there, fingers, there you the right. pull your but fingers. Again, but then again, bowel movements are so important, and flatulence, flatulence are a harbinger for defecation. So. Oh wow! Now we get okay. A harbinger <laughs> for defecation. Well, you know. <laughs> Uh, in layman's terms, taking a crap. But anyway, but, uh, I mean, let's face it. We all man. do it. And if that system's not working properly, nothing else matters. So, But you hey, you, you got you got it right. That elimination system, you know, uh, for those that audience out there, let me tell you something. There's a few things. A lady told me this years ago. She says, Tony, if you ever want to know how healthy you are inside, she told me to look at your poop. That's yeah, what she said. So to me, I'm going, I was in my 20s. I was really, it, it kind of threw me for a loop. She was like 70 or 80, but she was into the holistic stuff. She's the one that kind of introduced me to actually the fascination with how the body functions. So I says, what do you mean? So here she goes. She says, well, uh, there's a few things. And I added some stuff to because I do lectures. And I added some stuff to it to make it kind of comical. But I says, if you go, if you have to go to the bathroom and you have to take a novel, you're in trouble and you read it. Right. I said, if you go to the bathroom and you push really hard and you got rabbit pellets, you are really in trouble. If yeah. you push hard and it's a rock, that means you're constipated. So why are you constipated? Because your bowel has absorbed all the water and it can't push it out, which leads to hemorrhoids. But if it's saucy, you know, then, of course, there's something going on with the bacterial balance in the colon. But the, the a real good uh, stool, she said, should be approximately six to 12 inches in length and wow. one inches in diameter full. It should show you exactly the shape of the colon. Wow. 
wow. Yep. Anything other than that, you have po pockets inside the colon walls that can last for years. So whatever comes out of you is literally the shape of your colon. And it should it should flow too, right? And yep, but at the same time, it should not smell either. Because if it does smell, then that means you you you're rotten inside. You gotta you gotta clean it up. Yeah, and I'm a, <laughs> yeah, I'm a big fan. I, I recently I just started doing the colonics. And um, well, really, you got to be careful. Don't force the body to do something it can't do. It's no, just, but also the peristaltic system is the uh, the muscle or the system, yeah. the intestines, and it, it is a muscle, right? Yeah. And by uh, food, it's okay. it's double rated. You do and, it by food, or you do an enema? Well, no, it's a it's a it's a system through the colonic. It's a uh, uh, power pressure feed where it goes up. And it cleans you out. It re it, it detoxes. It rehydrates the colon, and that is actually you're training it to work. I love it. Ain't, 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 ain't nothing going up in me and cleaning me out, brother. I'll tell you right. <laughs> it, 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 it's amazing. So it's it's no. really it's a detox. But you know what I'm going to tell you though. With I drink the colon. Even though the bad comes, the good comes out too. So you have to replace that. And not necessarily yes. do you replace all the bacteria. So you got to go pre-probiotic. Uh, yes. See? And if I, Tony, if I could share this, we, we were in uh, Tbilisi, Georgia, which is for folks out there who don't know it, it's right next to Turkey and Armenia. Mm -hmm. And uh, most of my life, stomach issues, whatever. And when I was there, because the food is so pure, <laughs> yes. I was going twice a day. And I've yeah. never gone twice a day in my life. Wow. So, and it's the food. I mean, that's the only difference. Exactly. To this day, I go about three. Wow. You're lucky, yeah. man. Well, it's just, you know, it's just that I I really pay attention, you know. And so um, I started, in a, you know, we're getting a little personal here, audience. So please that's forgive us. This platform but is it's about, natural. Man. It's natural. We should be talking about it anyway. Uh, like I get up in the morning, have my first one. Then I have my my first meal. Then I have my second one, and then when I come home in the midday, then I have my third one. That's you a know? healthy. That is a healthy body. Yeah. There are people out there maybe three times a month, which is so Ooh. not healthy. That builds up. That's that means awesome. they're they're full of. Boop. Yeah. You know what I mean. So it's so important to obviously look at your stool, be aware, uh -huh. and optimum. They say. Correct me if I'm wrong, Tom. They say. When it goes in, it should come out. Right? Yeah, in a nice little package that the body doesn't need. Yeah, and that's the whole key. That's the elimination process. Because if you don't, most people have you swallowed. If you swallowed anything, I'm going to tell you this. This has happened. Uh, people swallow stuff when they were kids, and they will actually start getting healthy. And that that stuff will come out in a stool. They will actually see it, and they found in autopsies that. Uh, supplements uh, that people, vitamins people take, have been in the colon over 20 years undigested. Wow. Yeah. That is crazy. Yeah. So when you take a, to, when you take a vitamin and a supplement, a vitamin and supplement, uh, it should be a capsule, caplet, or, or powder, or liquid. It should yeah. never be, uh, is, try to stay away from tablets. If you do, you have to drink a lot of water. They yeah. kill my stomach, boy. If I if I take the the, the, the <coughs> tablet versus the capsules, boy, it, it, we all know you take those things on an empty stomach, it's not good. But see, it goes straight to your liver. And so the yeah. thing is that people don't understand, it sets there. The liver has to process that, right? Yeah. So, you know, you want to go with what's easier on your on your body, which is liquids or powders. Or capsules, you know what I mean? That's yeah. easier for your body to process and digest, you know? So yeah. it's, it's really good. So we have well, any questions? Uh, so for, who, if you're out there just joining us, uh, I am Doug Jeffrey. This is Mr. Tony Hill. This is Fit Over 50. And this platform is all about sharing and, back, uh, sharing and giving back, talking about overall health, from mental health to physical health. Everything starts with you, and you gotta you got to respect that temple that was given to you. So, Tony, uh, uh, we're, we're going to be live every Sunday at 8 a.m. So if somebody was looking to find us, how would they do that, sir? It's going to come across the screen. I got a feeling. You got you Really? It's going to come across the screen? It's going to come. It's gonna oh, come. there it is. Ah, oh, right. oh, my yeah. goodness. It there worked. Yeah, there we go. It worked. Yes. 
Yes, it worked. <laughs> a special shout out to our production. Yes, Ariel, thank you so much. <laughs> ah, there's so a Hey, you know what? There was I think there was a question that came across. Uh how do you know how do you know you have uh uh depression or mental health? How do you know? Yeah. How do you how do you, how, how do you know you are depressed? Yes. Um that's a very good question, actually. Uh, years ago, I, you know, I was just, I, I was struggling. You know, I, 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 you should be happy. You should feel good. And there was always this overall anxiety and fear. Right. I, it, it, there was no reason for it. And, and, and as I said, as I aged, I, you know, I was blessed enough to have success and all of that, but there was still this, this dark cloud hanging over me. And, uh, yeah. you know, you start trying to, you know, go outside instead of inside, you know, drinking too much and just more than I should have. And I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm 60 years old. I, I just can't live like this. I want to, I want to, I want to understand why I feel this way. Right, right. And, you know, there's, there, there's a lot of degrees, there's seasonal depression, there, there, there's so many different mm -hmm. things. And I was years ago, I was uh, diagnosed with uh, dysthymia, which is um, very uh, uh, stubborn uh, depression that doesn't respond to, you know, the, the SSRIs or the SNRIs, wow. uh, which uh, I'll clarify that the uh, 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 SRIIs are the serotonin uptake inhibitors, and the SNRIs are uh, serotonin and uh, uh, what's the other one? I have no I'm idea. Blank. Serotonin and uh, dopamine. Excuse me, uh, a little slow on that one. Uh, I believe that's correct. Um, and 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 once again, I share my personal my personal opinion, my personal journey. Right. Uh, so. Please, it, it, once again, you always want to uh, go to, you know, a doctor, a psychiatrist, uh, psychologist right. to really be diagnosed, to, to figure out what it is. And, you know, there's a huge checklist of, you know, how do you, you know, from uh, how, how you feel at different moments and what is your perspective on life? Because as I said before, it really is your your perspective. Mm -hmm. What do I see? Yeah, there's a uh, another question came in is how do uh, how do you start to get better? Well, from my from my point now, I'm as a young kid, I uh, was uh, raised in in an environment that uh, could only yield two things, which is death or prison. And uh, and what happened with me was uh, I actually went to therapy uh, for 10 years. I left home when I was 18, went into the military. And then I actually, for 10 years, uh, I didn't see my family. And that 10 year journey, uh, I was really alone because I, you know, my, you know, I didn't have a, a male role model in my life. And so uh, I went to therapy and the thing, the thing that helped me get better was uh, I remember uh, when I had my first appointment, I, it would start like this. Uh, Hi, my name is Tony. You know, nice to meet you. And I'm talking to a doctor and I'm saying, hey, I know and I understand that me talking to you is not the answer to my issues. However, I just want to use you as a sounding board so that I can actually learn how to walk through it. So I think when I made a decision to do that, they, they came back and says, well, Tony, everything that you're dealing with right now, you have to go back to the beginning. You can't fix it for them, but you can fix it for yourself. So the most difficult thing that I did was I had to really be honest. And so I had to go to my mom, you know, to my father, to my brother, to people that I that I grew up with that really had an effect on my life. And, you know, when you get in a, when you become an adult, you just think, OK, I'm older. Hey, you know, I just that's when I no, it's still you carry it like luggage unless you actually want to go back and fix it. So here, the catch was for me was when you go back and you talk to them and you share and then you you apologize, you're not apologizing for something you did to them. You're apologizing so that you can be free. 
you're not apologizing so they can come back and say, oh, I understand. So no, you're apologizing so that you can be free to walk in the newness of life and not in the shadow that you were raised. And I can tell you, my first person I went to was my mom. And when I went to my mother, uh, I actually started to share with her as a kid. Mom, you remember how when you, I used to, because I was a mama's boy, you know, I, I loved my mom, her embrace. And so I used to go to her and she said, boy, get, boy, go home. Now she didn't mean anything by that, you know, because I was really overdoing it a lot, but I was a child. But what that did for me is affected my, my life in relationship acceptance, and I became codependent over the years. So as I began to explain this to my mother, my mother looked at me, and I remember, and she had just tears in her eyes, and she said, Tony, I didn't know. And we embraced each other, and I think we cried for like 20 minutes. And that was the beginning of a healing. Of a and you got to realize, I was really, I was like in my 20s, mid-20s. And it's not customary for uh, black families to do that. So I had to come out of my culture, not for me to get approval from them. So what the therapist told me was that I needed to be free. I needed to be clear. And now I have children that are just incredibly successful. Uh, I, I mean, it's humbling to know because now they they know their father but they don't really know their father they just know the the father that's working because they he he now knows what love is you know what i mean so yeah. what got me better was i had to go back and that was the hardest journey because after it was all said and done now my brother's situation didn't turn out that way my brother he just went off the rails and we ended up fighting and you know it's like it was crazy but it it was really uh, it really was a catalyst that actually set me free and and uh, thanks to God it made me the man that I am today. So every day I'm striving to be better. So you know depression is something that if you don't face it, it's just going to loom over you over you till you die. Yeah, exactly. And 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 thank you for sharing, Tony. That's a, that's yeah. an amazing story, and that's really what this platform's about. I mean, yeah. to, to to share and we you know we all have our stuff in life and, you know, we're being men, you know, nobody wants to say, Hey, you know, I got issues, but right. it really is going back to the beginning and uh, just really taking a look at it. And, you know, from the, from the ketamine treatments, you know, it's also dealing with a therapist. It's not just one thing. Yeah. It's, it's really finding the, 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 the root of of the problem yes and you know from you know cognitive therapy to bibliotherapy there, there are so many therapies out there and it's 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 my it's my 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 saying it's the it's the four p's punctilious pupil of personal pursuit oh i ain't gonna say that if you if, if you really want to fix what's here you have to lock and load and just start going after it Mm -hmm. It does all start with you, and uh, there, there, there's so many um, uh, vehicles out there to help you pr pursue this. Yes, so, sir. you know, just take that first step and just really go after it. And it's amazing uh, by putting in the time, working on yourself, how you will you will feel. Right, I man, this it was really this was a really good eye opener for me. Every time I talk about this stuff, and I'm so glad that you know, we did this platform because, yeah, you know, it helps me to know how, how now men out there, we need each other. So we need to stop playing around. Men needs real men because without real men, I wouldn't be here. And I'm sure Doug has a lot of, you know, friends uh, that male, male figures that helped him to overcome what he's overcoming. So, you know, men out there, we're not going to forget you because you are important to us yes. as well as the women. So, you know, all the platforms out there is about women. Women can legally do a whole lot of things we can't do. Like, you know, they can kill you and blame it on PMS, you know, <laughs> and get off, you know. We can kill you, we can go to prison, you know what I mean? Because, you know, but, you know, I just said that, and I mean, it's, it's a little over the top, but I just said men and women are really different. But we complement each other in our different. Yes, we do. And, and I uh, personally, I think men men are certainly uh, 
stronger than, or excuse me, women are stronger than men. Oh yeah, you almost got in trouble. Harder, man. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah so, uh, Doug, uh, what I wanted to share is uh, next next week. I think uh, we're going to every Sunday at eight. We're going to have this show. Uh, the next topic of the show will be uh, what is health and where do I start? Right. Yes. Uh, I, and I think that that'll be a good topic right there. Uh, so Doug and I are going to help you with that. Uh, so Doug, do you have any last words? Any closing? No, it's been a pleasure. And once again, I want to reiterate on the fact, that, uh, uh, thank you for sharing your story because yeah. that's what this platform is all about. Yeah. You share your story. Somebody out there might be in that transitional period. And by hearing this, hopefully they're going to go, Hey, those guys did it. So I'm going to take that step. And then exactly. basically so on and so on. And it's all about sharing and giving back. So that's I mean, what really the is. platform is all, all about. And especially as you age, it's never too late to start. Exactly. And I say fit over 50 is not about age. Sometimes it's about, I, I take the word, the word fit fit. If you take the word and separate it over 50, Okay, if you ever get there, because most people aren't living that long. Exactly. But fit encompasses health, physically, spiritually, uh, and, and mentally. So the, the whole thing is, is that, again, with what were we talking about? The four legs, which was food, rest, rest, exercise, relaxation, yeah. taking care of yourself, all, all those things are so good. We're you're talking out. about the, I think there was five legs. No, well, let me see, man. It was you, you, you got me. I always, I always say three: food. Yeah, but, I say food, rest, and water. That's what I say. Yeah, but relaxation, yeah. stress kills. So it's you know, uh, from from you know, yoga to having that time where you spiritually, you just you know, thank God and 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 just really find that center and that peace because right. it, it's all chemicals, man. Chemicals. Really, really, it is. We are as humans. We amazing. What a lovely creation, and to respect that temple that was given to you really yes, is sir. a blessing. Yes, sir. So, with that, you can always reach out to us. Give us your questions. We're gonna answer them. We will address them at every show. So don't be a stranger. Yeah, uh, join us. Let's, let's, at, let's, let me see let's, if I can remember. You can reach us at. Mm. Where is it? Is it is it going to come up on the screen? Uh -oh. So that's that's that, that's Instagram. Ah, there yeah. we go. There yes. Go. And then what yes. what about what about Facebook too? Facebook's up there too, right? Facebook, yes. And, and then uh, uh, YouTube uh, dot com with Touche uh, Fitness and Facebook is info dot fit over fifty. Instagram once again is uh, fit dot over fifty. Yes. So once again, thank you all for uh, joining myself. I'm Doug Jeffrey and uh, my punctilious partner of salubrious activities. Mr. Hill. Hill. You guys enjoy your Sunday and uh, God bless. And thank you Love for being your brother. Lots of fun, man. All right, man. Have a good one.